So before the break, you saw me get the tiger to the mid stage. Now let's press on and get it completed. We can now start to add some of the important details, uh, stripes, features around the eyes, and some darker shadows using a burnt umber. So this time I've switched to a number six round brush. So we're gonna begin around the head, go for the stripes in there first. So try to think of them as markings rather than stripes. Of course, uh, stripes uh, suggest regularity. And of course, in a tiger's face, they're anything but regular. Follow the contours in the tiger's head and body. Obviously, this is where a, a fairly decent pencil sketch of the markings and other features comes in handy. So you can still see these through the glaze of the two colors we put down already, the orange and the burnt sienna. So we begin by just suggesting a little bit of texture at the moment. We don't need too much. It's always a good idea as well, if you can, to work from the inside out. Nostrils, all these things can be prepared with the burnt umber to give some background tone to your final very dark or almost black markings and details. There is a band of very dark fur which runs all the way through behind the whiskers. So I'm going to paint that as a complete solid tone for now. And that connects up with this stripe into the rough. All these markings, all these stripes are almost connected. Notice the way that I'm uh, dragging the brush as well, trying to drag the brush in the direction that the fur is growing. Basically from the inside, almost like a cartwheel. The spokes of a cartwheel from between the eyes, around the head and face. And if you can get a suggestion of this fur pattern in early, then your finished painting is gonna look uh, much more realistic. Now we have a darker shadow behind the ear and the roof. Again, we can use the burnt umber over the two glazes we already have to make that even darker. Remembering, of course, if you want to keep it soft, dampen your brush and just feather it out a little bit. Keeps it nice and soft. The markings above the eyes, trying to work backwards and forwards so we keep them in balance. This time the brush strokes are going in a more vertical direction because the fur is going upwards from between the eyes as opposed to downwards below the eyes. Each tiger, of course, has individual stripes, almost like a fingerprint, but the, the patterns on the head are usually pretty similar. We mustn't forget the dark ears, of course, everything apart from the white spot at the back of the ears, sometimes referred to as follow me spots. These enable the tiger to be seen by offspring and other tigers quite clearly through the camouflage, kind of identifying marks. And a little dark area just below the mouth, coming into the chin, again using downward strokes. And then once the head is finished, we can continue doing the same thing around the rest of the tiger. What I'll try to do at this point is to make the stripes a little bit fainter as we head towards the back. This is going to give us a, a sense of depth in the painting, as if the tiger is stalking us out of the painting. So the stronger the tones are in the head and the face, and the less strong they are further away, that will give you that depth of field. Okay, so it's on to our final stage of the uh, details and fur texture. And for this, we're going to use a smaller brush, about a number four round brush. And we're going to use a, a mixture of the same burnt umber with black added to it. So again, I don't want it to be uh, completely flat black, just a very, very dark brown. So we'll mix that up in a separate part of the palette. That looks okay. Not as thin as before, uh, maybe a little bit more brown. What we don't want to, is our brush to run dry. If the brush is dry, then it'll start to drag and leave gaps in your painting. So again, I'm going to start uh, in the face and work my way outwards, trying to let that colour fade out towards the back end of the tiger, again, to give that feeling of depth and perspective. So I'll start around the nose this time, darkening the nostrils. I'm not attempting to completely paint over what I've already got. So as I said earlier, I want some of this um, subtle brown and orange tones, even through the final black details, even through the 
the so-called black stripes or black markings. So it's not just a question of blocking out what we've already got, but more enhancing it. Almost, if you like, reverse highlighting. So as we normally associate highlighting with white, there's no reason why we can't highlight dark colours with black. Again, remembering to take off excess paint from your brush, make sure it's nice and damp, and we can fade that colour out or feather it out into the chin. So we keep getting those nice soft tones, even with the darkest colour. Back to the paint again and the whisker follicles. So remember, we started to paint these with just a stripe of burnt umber. Now what we're doing is highlighting almost individual thicker spots where the whiskers are going to grow out from. And in case you can nev never see them on the photograph that you're working from, if you remember that these come in rows of four from top to bottom, that's regardless of the size of the cat, Four rows from top to bottom, and if you can't see them on your photograph and you know they're there, you can paint them in. And this side section here, remember, is just totally dark fur, all the way up to the next stripe into the rough. But before we continue that, of course, we've just got to soften it around the edges and fade it out a little bit. And then we can continue that dark tone into the rough allowing that brown to show through, which gives you depth, but stops it looking too flat. And as I go through, I'm just going to keep softening those edges, creating almost softer shadows in between the dark and the light sections. So those little softening strokes are all very important for creating extra soft tones in and around the stripes, remember. What I'm going to do is uh, save the eyes till last of all, so that when we come to do those, we can put the colour in at the same time. And we continue this around the body. The strongest tones appear in the head and the face, and that's going to bring the head and the face nearer towards us. So now I'm just going to carry on using exactly the same technique around the rest of the body, enhancing dark areas where needed, and leaving others slightly less toned. On the leading leg, we can just see the, the dark marks of the sheathed claws. As domestic cats, tigers do have retractable claws, and when they're sheathed, you'll just see this little dark mark here. Because the leg is closer to us, I want to just make sure that they're slightly more visible in tone than the ones on the back leg, to give that illusion of depth. On the midsection here, there's no real need to put too much texture in the stripes. The most important thing is to get the shape of the stripe, the way it curves around the belly, the way it curves around the hips and so on, which give the illusion of the underlying form and shape of the tiger itself. Before we get to the final part, which is the tail, I'm just going to knock back this uh, leading leg, the one that's behind, with a little glaze of the burnt umber black mix, just to make it a little bit cooler, a little bit darker, so that it actually appears to be going back rather than coming forward. Now we'll finish off with the tail, just putting those final few stripes into there and creating a, a darker shadow in the tail because we can't really see any white stripes in there. There are white stripes, but visually we can't see them as white because it's in shadow, of course. And then just soften it off with a damp brush. Okay, so now everything else is in place, we'll finish off by painting the eyes. Tiger's eyes do vary in colour quite a lot, but um, for this one we'll do them slightly green. First thing I'm going to do is do a little coat of uh, cadmium yellow first. Again, not too thick. We don't want these eyes to be like headlights. Now before that dries completely, what I want to do is add a little bit of the sap green. What I want to try and do is leave a little bit of the yellow at the bottom of the eye, which is the highlight. As the light passes through the green of the eye, it creates a highlight at the bottom, which is going to be our yellow. So working from the top with the sap green, and just allow a little bit of the yellow to shine at the bottom. Now we have to wait for that to dry before we can do the final tidying up of the rims, the pupils, and so on. Finally, we're going to detail the uh, rest of the eyes with the burnt umber black mix. So we need to bring them into sharp contrast. So we'll just uh, adjust the markings above and below so that they become almost the darkest part of the painting now. And then we can work that down 
to the corners of the eyes, the upper eyelids, and on the lower rims. Into the tear duct, the corners of the eyes there, and then the pupils, of course. Pupils need to be carefully placed so the tiger's looking ahead. Make sure all the markings in the immediate vicinity of the eyes are nice and strong. It's a good idea to sit back and just squint at that to check your final tones, the dark tones around the eyes especially. And then we'll take our damp brush. We're just creating a little soft shadow underneath the upper eyelid, just to darken the green a little bit. Finally, I'm just going to take a little bit of the burnt sienna and here and there, just glaze a slightly warmer colour, especially in order to bring the head forward again. So we take away some of that really pale, almost bare paper, and instantly that warms it up, almost makes it softer, because we're glazing over the, the structure of the stripes, the markings, and so on. As long as we don't go over an area that's already wet, we'll be perfectly fine doing this. And again, because we wanted to fade out towards the back, we'll make the colour a little bit stronger in the foreground around the leading leg, the shoulders, and the first part of the back. Okay, so that's the tiger in watercolour all finished. Join me in the next programme when we'll be painting a panda in acrylics. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.